Hey everyone, welcome to another review, and here is my review for the most highly anticipated movie of the year, yes, Star Wars, The Force Awakens, yes, Star Wars, The Force Awakens stars John Boyega, Daisy Ridley, Oscar Isaac, Dumb Home Gleason, Adam Driver, Peter Mayhew, Harrison Ford, and Carrie Fisher, and it's directed by the one and only J.J. Abrams, yes, he made Star Trek, he brought Star Trek back, and made it awesome again, can he do the same with Star Wars? Yes, they can. Yes, they can. This movie was amazing. Okay, okay. All right, let's talk about the story. The story of Star Wars: The Force Awakens. This movie takes place about 30 years after Return of the Jedi, and honestly, by the opening credits, as soon as the opening credits came, I was just pumped. I was back into Star Wars again. It explains to you sort of what happened within the 30 years, and everyone's looking for Luke Skywalker, and that's the the main gist of the story. Everyone is looking for Luke Skywalker, and the plans to find out where he is is in this, is in this little droid, and that is the main point of the story. But the story is also about the two main characters, Finn and Rey. Rey is a scavenger on a desert planet, and Finn is a stormtrooper working with the Republic, and he doesn't agree with what they're doing, so he basically goes off on his own and meets Rey and meets Poe, a pilot who's like one of the greatest pilots in the Rebellion. And basically, really what the Empire did, that's what's almost happening right now. The Republic is basically taking over again. Instead of a rebellion, pretty much, it's pretty much a rebellion, but it's a resistance, and they're standing against the Republic. And the Republic is ruled by, ruled by this Supreme Counselor guy, and it's also got his main troops. One of them is played by Dom Hong Gleason, and one of them is played by Adam Driver, and that is, of course, the big baddie Sith Lord himself, Kylo Ren. Yes, yeah, so basically, he's after, the, after this droid because he wants to find where Luke Skywalker is. When the main characters, Ray and Finn, have destroyed, they go on an adventure together, meet each other, meet a bunch, meet a bunch of colorful characters, and of course they run into the man himself, Han Solo, and Chewbacca, and the Millennium Falcon, and then shit just goes down. And honestly, this movie was freaking incredible. This movie was amazing. I loved the Star Wars The Force Awakens. This... This was everything that I wanted this movie to be. Everything that I wanted was in this movie, and it wasn't like the prequels. Thank God. Fuck those prequels. And yes, it wasn't like a big CG fest with bland wooden characters and just all oh, this shitty choreographed action. Everything was done right. It plays a lot of homage to the old school Star Wars, the original Star Wars movie, and it was great. It had a very good story, and the characters... Every character in this movie was awesome. I loved every character. I loved Poe. Oscar Isaac did a great job. He was a really cool pilot. He was kind of a smart ass and, you know, kind of reminded me of a young Han Solo in a way. He was really good. I was awesome. Awesome. And I love the main characters. The main characters, I think, almost stole this whole movie. Ray and Finn were great. Daisy Ridley did a phenomenal job. And when you learn a little bit more about her character, she becomes all the more interesting. And John Boyega, I loved him in Attack the Block. I know a lot of people don't know who John Boyega is, but watch Attack the Block. But he is great in this movie. He's so likable, lovable, and he's very compelling, too. And he's very interesting as well. And his chemistry with Daisy Ridley was just so good. They had such a beautiful friendship in this movie. And when they run into Han Solo, yes, Chewie, we're home. Oh, goosebumps. Han Solo, the greatest Star Wars character ever. He was awesome. Harrison Ford back as Han Solo, and he is fantastic in this movie. Peter Mayhew also back as Chewbacca. He is great too. Seeing them two together on the Millennium Falcon was just awesome. Just awesome. And them together with the Ray and Finn, they were just such a cool and likable, awesome team. And oh, I just loved it. Loved it. I was transported back into the original Star Wars, but also with some new refreshing things that just made the movie all the more amazing, all the more enjoyable. And I love the villain, the villain in this movie, Kylo Ren. Honestly, he looked amazing from the previews. He looked really freaking cool. He's more than cool. He's so incredible. Adam Driver did a phenomenal job playing Kylo Ren. He was such a great villain. He was very intimidating when he had to be. And he's also very compelling. And, like, yeah, I felt bad for him in some scenes. Like, really bad for him. Like, my God, poor guy. You could tell, like, he's trying to battle with the dark side and the light side. And you can really see it. And it's just, he does a, such a good job. I was a little, like, you know, I was a little nervous that Adam Driver was playing Kylo Ren. I'm like, Adam Driver's a good actor, but I've seen him mostly in, like, comedies and dramas. Like, can he play a Sith Lord? Hell yeah, he can, because he did, he did a phenomenal job in this movie. He was so good in this movie, and 
I loved it. I loved him in it. He was like one of my favorite characters in this movie. Ray and Finn and Han Solo are probably the best characters and probably my favorites, but Kylo Ren was amazing. I loved him. Every scene he was in, he was just great. Also, a dumb home Gleason, he was very good in this movie too. Like, yeah, he's like, not bad, not bad, really. Like, I thought Oscar Isaac and Dumb Home Gleason played their best roles in, uh, in Ex Machina, but they're both phenomenal in this movie. I loved them both. And, and the funniest thing is, Oscar Isaac was like the very likable guy. I can't wait to see Oscar Isaac in X-Men Apocalypse when he's playing fucking Apocalypse. But yeah, he was just so likable and charming in this movie. And Dumb Mom Gleason, I never seen him play such an evil, sadistic bastard. He did a great job, a really good job. And also, I loved that this movie answers questions, but then ends with more qu leaving more questions, because that's what Episode 8 and 9 is about. And that's why I loved this movie. This movie was like watching Empire Strikes Back. Like, it hooks you, and you want to know more. Right when this movie ended, I was like, no! I want to know more! I want to know more! And that's why I loved this movie. Now I know what people felt in 1980 when they saw Star Wars Empire Strikes Back. Like, when that movie ended, people were probably like, what the fuck? Like, what happened? I want to know more! That's what happened when I saw this movie. I wanted to know more. Instantly when this movie was over, I wanted to watch it again. I, I wanted the, the projectionist to say, Hey, please, put episode 8 on. Oh, you don't have episode 8? What the fuck? <laughs> I wanted to see episode 8. I still I really want to see episode 8. Like, really bad. Like, like now. Do it now. <laughs> Do it now. But, yeah. I loved this movie. This movie was just so freaking good. I was just amazed by it. It was like the most fun I had at the theaters the whole year. It was just incredible. Incredible. J.J. Abrams, he's like the king of the nerds, like Joss Whedon. Everyone calls Joss Whedon the king of the nerds, but J.J.'s giving him a run for his money because he did Star Trek amazingly and now he did Star Wars amazingly. He just did an amazing job. And Lawrence Kasdan returns as the writer. Come on, the guy who gave us Empire and Return of the Jedi, you gotta have him as a writer again. He does a great job, too. He's probably one of the main reasons why this movie was good, too, because he knows Star Wars. But J.J. Abrams, he's a Star Wars fan. You can tell this was made by a Star Wars fan. And John Williams, of course, returns again, scoring the movie. He did a phenomenal job as well. And the practicality in this movie was also good. It wasn't filled with CG like the shitty prequels. There was a lot of practical effects which I loved. And in the scenes that did have CG, they still looked really good, but the practicality was awesome. It was so refreshing to see, and I loved it. I loved it. And the editing was really good. The cinematography was really good. The visuals were freaking phenomenal. I loved all the homages to the classic old-school Star Wars, and everything in this movie was done right. Is it a flawless movie? Of course not. This movie is not a flawless movie. It's not a perfect movie. But neither is Star Wars. Star Wars is not a perfect movie. Star Wars and Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi are not flawless, perfect movies. They're just great movies. There are movies that are just timeless and just iconic and just movies we can watch all the time and never get sick of. And that's what I thought when I saw this movie, The Force Awakens. It's a movie I will never get sick of because I just know that right away. I When a movie hits me like this, I just know I will watch this probably for the rest of my life. It's like Empire Strikes Back. I've watched Empire Strikes Back since I've been four years old. I still cannot get sick of it after seeing it like 60 times. And I could tell I'll never get sick of The Force Awakens. It's a phenomenal movie. It's not perfect. It's not flawless. It's got its problems. It's got its flaws. But I don't give a shit. I just wanted a good, fun Star Wars movie. And I finally got it. After 30-something years, we finally got a good Star Wars movie. Star Wars movie. Because Star Wars means the world to us. There is a freaking day of the year that's Star Wars Day. Star Wars is just people's lives. We deserved a good Star Wars movie, and the prequels just ruined that. But The Force Awakens brought Star Wars back, and that is what we needed. And I cannot wait for Episode 8, and I cannot wait for Episode 9. I, I want to know where, where the story is going, because I loved everything about this movie. I loved the characters. I loved it. Loved it how it was written. I loved how it was directed. There's a lot of great, deep, emotional scenes that I was almost crying. I was almost bawling in this movie because how sad some scenes were. And it was really funny. There's some really fun, enjoyable scenes, and there's some really half a lot hilarious scenes. It's just a blast to watch. It's a fucking blast to watch. I adored this movie. This movie was everything that I wanted. I adored it. I probably, I, I, I'll just repeat myself now. I loved it, I loved it, I loved it. Go see Star Wars The Force Awakens. It's hands down one of the most funnest movies you'll ever watch this year. It's phenomenal. 
scale 1 to 10, I will of course give Star Wars The Force Awakens a 10 out of 10. What else would I give this movie? It's phenomenal. See it. See it. See it. And I'm definitely probably going to go see it like three more times this weekend. Yeah, so go Star Wars. Yeah, that was my review of the movie Star Wars The Force Awakens. So yeah, in the comment section below, please tell me, did you see Star Wars Force Awakens? And if so, did you like it? And if you have seen it, who is your favorite new character? Not old character, out of the new characters they brought in this film, who's your favorite new character? Mine, Ray and Finn are right there, but Kylo Ren, man, he is awesome. I'll probably go with Kylo Ren, he was amazing. But who's your favorite new character? Comment below, let me know. And as always, if you like this video, please like and subscribe to this channel, and join the dark side.